In this part of video, I would like to focus your attention on a very important part of validity, which is criterion validity. It's important because very often in the work context, we want to know what kind of variables predict work performance. So in this example, uh, you see a, a hypothetical correlation between test score, let's say conscientiousness, and work performance. Based on personality theory, we would expect that, in general, there should be a positive relationship between work performance and conscientiousness. In this case, we want to predict work performance based on personality scores. But of course, in many cases, that can be also cap cognitive capacity, some abilities. So we would expect that the higher the cognitive capacity, the higher the work performance. But is that always the case? Is those, are those patterns are so clear as in this example? Let's take a look at specific theory that says that not always those patterns between predictor and a criterion are so simple. They are not always so simple because we can differentiate between three different types of criteria. Following Thorndike, we can identify immediate criterion, so uh, when a specific instrument or sample is used in order to assess whether our prediction is clear uh, and correct or not. So let's assume that you uh, implement a assessment center and you see whether there is a relationship between personality and work sample. In this case, work sample that is used in assessment center is seen as an immediate uh, criterion. On the other hand, we may have low delay criterion. Let's say you hire a group of people, not uh, 200 that applied for a job, but only 20. And later on, you're interested to see whether within this group of 20 employees, there is a relationship between personality test that was used uh, during the personal selection and client satisfaction. That can be seen as uh, measures, uh, one of the measures of work performance. On the other hand, you may have a high delay uh, criteria, ultimate. Let's say you're not interested in client satisfaction, but something uh, long term, like work performance after 12 months, that can be assessed as a part of annual evaluation. Why it's complex, because for each criteria we may have either strong or weaker relationships between personality. And also another source of variance, of error variance, when estimating criterion validity are something that happens within employees. Let's consider another example. You want to predict work performance based on spe specific ability. And this specific ability develops across work years or work months. As you see, we have two development patterns for two types of employees, A and B. A develops this ability differently with a different dynamics than employee B. On the other hand, employee B, after a long time, is able to develop the skills even higher than employee A. So both people, they represent different types of patterns. So if you would use criterion, immediate criterion, basically, uh, this is what you can see on the left part of the graph, probably you will not be able to find differences between uh, employee A and B. But if you would do that uh, by measuring low delay uh, criterion, that probably you would identify a huge difference between employee and B may be smaller if you would apply a high delay criterion, but still um, that would be reversed if compared to low delay. So as you see, this assessment of criterion can be really tricky. For the purpose of measuring criterion validity, we use this simple model that takes into account conceptual predictor and an instrument and conceptual criteria based on which we can select uh, assessment, a method that can assess criteria. 
through the process of operationalization, we identify how we would like to operationalize each conceptual predictor and criteria. So let's take a look at this simple problem. To what extent personality predict work, predicts work performance? To do that, to test criterion validity of personality questionnaire, we can see, we can take a look at the MBTI, all the dimensions that can be measured within this test, and a specific outcome. Let's say uh, a work performance that can be evaluated during the annual assessment discussion. Because in this case, we are going to have validation of personality trait, of uh, sorry, of personality questionnaire, uh, and its relationship uh, between um, personality and work performance. In this case, that would be uh, criterion validity. We select a questionnaire and evaluation after a year as a method to operationalize both constructs. When thinking about construct validity and criterion validity, you can ask a question, why we really measure personality? We measure personality because it's a relatively stable and consistent set of traits. Researchers that study uh, personality, they also emphasize importance of different biological constitutions of personality. In many research, you can find that it's possible to identify brain patterns related to specific personality traits. Also, what they found in research that personality interact with uh, environmental conditions. It may produce many different types of reactions that are important for a phenomenon called person job fit. For a person who uh, would like to work in HR department, it would be important to take into account that in many cases, those people who select candidates, they try to increase the fit between a person and a job. To do that, on one hand, we need to diagnose personality of a candidate. On the other hand, we have to know a lot about specific job. What it requires, what kind of behaviors are important to perform this job well. Knowing that, we may create procedures during the personal selection that can help us to detect the fit between a person and a job. And knowing that, we can select the best candidates. To do that, to measure personality, we can use, for instance, Hexaco or other questioners. On the other hand, we may also find evidence that personality not only is important to uh, increase this job person fit, but also it was found that personality predict different type of job related behaviors like counterproductive work behaviors, leadership behavior, teamwork, even specific behavior like training performance. In those research they found that relationship between personality and behaviors was higher than 0.30. Is it high? Is it low? Or maybe it's medium relationship. What's also important is that they also found in research that incremental validity of personality over cognitive capacity test can be on average also pretty substantial. In this case, you see that um, it's a summary for a set of research. They found that typically validity over capacity tests is quite high, it's 0.60. I mentioned before that both constructs, reliability and validity, are linked to each other. Why is that? It's because, according to classical test theory, according to CTT, maximum criterion validity equals to square root of 
reliability coefficient of predictor, in this case Rxx. Let's take a look at two examples. We want to test validity of uh, instrument of test X, and we know that uh, reliability value of test X is 0.70. It's not really high, but it's also not low. Based on the simple formula, square root from reliability coefficient, we know that the maximum criterion validity between test X and test Y, if it's used in this research, would be 0.84. Similar calculations we can do for another type of situation. Let's assume that reliability for test X is 0.20, and without knowing the uh, reliability of uh, test Y that it's used as a criterion, we can conclude that potential maximum um, validity would be 0.45. So we can conclude that if a test is not reliable, that cannot be valid. I ask you a few minutes before whether value of 0.60 or 0.30 is a high validity. Let's take a look at the standards. Again, the same as for reliability. Also, when it comes to discussing validity, we can take into account two types of standards. First of all, are cotton standards that are important for individual diagnoses. And according to those standards, it suggested that uh, tests um, should be used only if validity, different aspects of validity, let's say uh, convergent validity, is at least 0.40. Then this instrument is sufficient, especially for personal selection. When you decide upon other people's future, we need to use valid methods. The same when you take into account criterion validity. It should be high enough, at least 0.40. Situation is slightly different when we consider research and something that is more or less important for research purposes. According to Cohen, we differentiate between three levels of correlation sizes or effect sizes. If a correlation, let's say convergent validity is 0.10, we conclude that correlation is rather low, so it's a low effect size. If it's 0.30, it's medium. If it's uh, 0.50, it's high correlation, it's high effect size. So if, on average, relationship between personality traits and work-related behavior is 0 .60, we, uh, 0 .30, sorry, we can conclude that it's a, a medium uh, value of relationship. If it's 0 .60, we can conclude that it's high effect size, so it's really strong relationship. Let's discuss a really extreme situation. Can we say, can we ask a question, can a coefficient um, value be high, too high maybe. Let's assume that you want to test the validity of self-control trait. If you test self-control and then to test for validity you use a test to measure positive emotions and you obtain correlation that is 0.95, then you will conclude, hmm, this relationship is pretty high. If you also take into account measurement error, you would say that, yeah, maybe this relationship is almost perfect. On the other hand, you can conclude that overlap between both constructs that, was me that were measured, self-control and positive emotions, maybe is really too high. Honestly, a correlation 0.95, it's just too high, because it shows that both constructs are so highly correlated that they almost perfectly overlap with each other. In this case, this assessment is not a good assessment of construct validity. Or maybe self-control measure is something that can be easily confused with positive emotions. So if relationship when testing for validity is too high, that can suggest two problems. Either 
incorrect conceptualization of your measurement that you would like to uh, of your measure that you would like to evaluate or selection of an instrument to test for criterion validity is just not correct and finally final point that needs to be considered for validity it's a problem that when you enter organizations and if you want to test the validity of instruments at an organization you're supposed to take into account that the level of data can be really complex let's take a look at this research example as you see on the left hand side they've tested different types of inputs to predict work outcomes so they've been testing individual level factors team level factors and organizational level factors i would assume that in your previous courses you mostly focused on individual level constructs like intelligence or personality in this case of course those constructs are important but in the organizational context the other elements higher order variables are also relevant in this research they were taking into account a mediation model as you see in the middle we have different variables that can describe what happens between people for organizations that's really important information what happens if people start to interact with each other on one hand we know that we can predict work performance based on individual traits on the other hand there's a question what we can predict based on team level variables let's say team spirit to what extent different team processes can be related to work outcomes in your psychometrical project you're going to take into account one of the possible organization variables that can represent higher order levels of organizational uh, aspects it can be for instance position so you can investigate differences between managers and subordinates you can investigate simple differences between part-time and full-time employees because this kind of variables they can be seen as a higher order levels that can be important even more important individual level factors that's it for now thank you for your attention